Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the X-Tool 10 watt diode laser. We're going to throw a couple different materials at it. Some shocking, some not so much. And see how it performs. How does it stack up against what you may or may not expect. First up, we have a stainless steel razor blade. You can see I've put the settings that I used at the bottom here. Some of these clips are sped up, but most of them are in real time, just so you can get an idea of how long it may take you to use the laser on these materials. On a couple of these I did multiple passes just to show how it might perform if you really wanted it to work. This one is one in particular that I did do that on. Most people will tell you that a diode laser won't mark metal and that is true for the most part. Stainless steel seems to work pretty well. Brass and aluminum not so much but we'll get into that in a minute you can see that this did actually mark pretty well there's no way it's going to cut that circle out and the image engrave and the cut function seem to perform about the same regardless of settings next up we have some plain old notebook paper this one was really satisfying uh, just because of how clean it cut and watching that little uh, circle of paper come out, shoot out rather, the other side. The actual image engraving itself, nothing to write home about. It's actually pretty spotty, although I do suppose if you were to lower your power, you might get better results. I think the speed was probably up too high, but it's most likely doable. Next up we have blue painter's tape. You know it, you love it. Some people use this as a mask when they're cutting wood in order to keep the char and soot from making their lines look not so clean. Given how easily it cuts through the tape, I could see this being used as a stencil if you wanted to, say, cover your board in some tape, cut out your design, and then uh, peel the parts back and paint through it. The engraving didn't go all the way through, which is good. I think you could refine it, but I don't know why you would ever want to engrave an image on a blue painter's tape to begin with. Next up, a coated steel business card. Uh, I just got these off Amazon. There's nothing too terribly special about them. They do take a long time to mark, to remove that coating, and it smells bad, so make sure you've got proper exhaust set up. You're never going to get through because this is steel. But you can engrave and etch pretty well, especially if you're just removing a coating or a paint from something. 
aluminum foil, we know what's going to happen with this, but we're going to try it anyway because it's thin. We used similar settings as we had on the coated business card trying to cut it. Uh, we used similar settings for the engraving. And upon closer inspection, we can tell that it did absolutely nothing to this aluminum foil. Any other kind of aluminum, it behaves the same way. I'm not sure what the science is, but we're going to try some veg tan leather next. This is a 3 to 4 ounce veg tan leather. It's probably, I don't know. 3 millimeters thick, 2.5-3 millimeters thick. I've cut this before and it performs quite well, but it smells like dying animals. So, well-ventilated room is pretty much a necessity. I'm going to go and give it a second pass on just the cut only because I know that it can get through. And disaster strikes. The design on the height adjustment of this laser sucks. Randomly drops down no matter how tight you tighten the thumb screw. There's probably somebody online that solved this already. So with two passes we can see that it etches pretty well and it will definitely cut through probably with another pass or perhaps a slower speed but the possibility is definitely there. Next up, a delicious tortilla corn chip. Now the real struggle with this chip was because it's not flat, I'm not sure exactly where to focus the laser. So I went ahead and focused it to the tallest part of the chip, that little curvy bit there. I actually ran, I think, three passes on this one because I really wanted it to work. I wanted to be able to cut a nice circle out of this tortilla chip. I wanted to be able to print images onto my tortilla chips before I eat them. As you can probably see, it didn't work out so well on the first pass. Now I did fiddle with the settings just a tiny bit in between each pass. What I put up at the beginning of this little segment was the final settings. So I believe I increased the power and slowed it down a little bit. 
but the final settings were the ones that I provided to you. Even though this wasn't entirely successful, it did smell really good. I don't think there's any toxic fumes put out by etching tortilla chips, but if there are, they smell really good. So you can tell that the engrave kind of burnt through and it's not very defined. I think that's due to the lack of focus, but the cut with a little bit of finagling pops right out. Next up, some leftover 3D printing material. Uh, this is a PLA raft from another project I did. It's two millimeters thick, 1.7 to be exact. And we're going to go with the smooth side. The head of the laser fell down again, not all the way but enough to where if you were working on something nice you would probably ruin it. So you can mark PLA, I don't think you're going to cut through it, maybe with a lot of gumption, a lot of passes. The engraving also didn't turn out very detailed, and I'm not 100% sure why. Now a lot of people say you can't cut clear Lexan, you can't mark clear Lexan on a diode laser, but I have some right here, it's a quarter inch thick and we're going to give it a try. The first thing I noticed about this Lexan was as you're cutting it, it pops, and I'm not sure if that's gas being released from inside the material or if it's melting and forming bubbles which then pop, but it makes uh, little popcorn-y kind of noises. So you can see that the cut function probably never going to get through but you can at least make a good mark on it. The engraving is very very hit or miss but an interesting thing I noticed was that it actually marked inside of the material. Kind of gave it a 3D effect. Probably not useful for anything but it's an interesting observation. And that's kind of the end of it. If you have any more materials to suggest, I'm more than willing to throw them under my laser. Please shoot me a comment. Make sure to subscribe if you like videos like this. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.